This is the Corner Cutter Podcast, a consistent weekly show all about speed cubing, and you're listening to episode 50. Welcome to the Corner Cutter Podcast, podcasting since 2014. I'm your host, Josh, and this is the most consistent cubing podcast dedicated to entertain and educate you with in-depth conversations with cubers from all across the sport. My website is thecornercutterpodcast.com, and thank you so much for joining me today for episode 50. This is going to be a good one. I can't wait. I can't believe I'm at episode 50 already. This is cool. And so I've been doing this show since the be- the very end of 2016, so we're approaching two years coming right up. A quick overview of what I am going to be covering today. I'll have question of the month, my answer, and a new question. Records releases and ratings for Cubing News. I'm going to go over the Corner Cutter podcast history, how I got into podcasting, and all about that. I think that will be interesting for you guys. And then also a little bit of behind the scenes about me and how I publish the show every week. And also, I have a few shout-outs. So now, let's go right... Let's dive right into the Corner Cutter podcast history. Okay, so I thought it would be great to get my longtime co-host from the Basscaster Bros podcast on with me to discuss how we got into podcasting and how we started listening to podcasts. So... I have my older brother, JJ, on. JJ, welcome. Thank you, Josh, so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and congratulations on reaching 50th episode. Yeah, thanks. Back on when we were on fifty episode 50 for um, Basscaster Bros, I think we also did some behind-the-scenes stuff as well. Yeah, that will be coming later in the episode, so... Why don't we start off on how we started listening to podcasts? I know, well, why don't you share you, since you got an iPod Shuffle first. Sure. So when I was 10 years old, my dad got me a iPod Shuffle for my birthday. And I got to open this present early because, you know, it was one of my best presents and I knew about it beforehand. So I was really excited about that. And I think I started listening to like MP3 files and stories first, but then soon after, Got into podcasts. Mm, yeah. And then soon after that, into the fishing section of podcasts. Okay. So did I I get my iPod Shuffle a few, like six months later? uh, You were nine and a half when you got yours. Okay. So it was a year and a half later. Um, Was it? Maybe one year. Okay. A year. Right around there. Mm -hmm. Because you wanted one. Yeah. When you saw how cool my was. I wanted to be like my older brother. So, and like, I could tell you were having a lot of fun listening to stuff. Oh, yeah, I was. And I think we remember we would share at Earbuds sometimes so we both could listen. Uh, I don't quite recall that, but I bet it happened. Or you would let me listen to some things. So. I can't remember what the first fishing podcast was. I know, I can't either. Some of the early ones were Live Bait. Um, No, it was Just Go Fishing. No, it was Live Bait and something. Just Go Fishing. Two pound test and a bear hook, tournament fishing radio, and northeast ice fishing were and some of the early ones. All these podcasts have stopped. Yes. So, <laughs> and I think we would... some of these podcasts stopped before we started and some after, but that was a main reason we started. Well, not a main reason. One of the reasons we started ours was because we saw there was a gap in the what is the ter- terminology? The podcast, the fishing podcast N- industry. Niche. Niche. Yeah. There we go. Or so, niche. People like to say. Yeah, UK, Australia, okay. all that. But um, I kind of go back and forth. So Anyway, yeah, so we started ours to try to fill yeah, that. Yeah, but going back a little bit, we, like, it was, I mean, we listened to podcasts and stuff. We were, I mean, I still didn't really think about, I just knew the term podcast, that's what it was called, but I didn't really think about it. Um, but 
Yeah, so this podcast started ending, and like we were throwing around the idea of starting our own, but we weren't very serious about it. And then it was early 2014 where we started really getting serious, like we really should start one. That's true. I think that February we did a practice episode, and then after that we did a few more practice segments and then we launched april 11th 2014 and that's only about 10 years after podcasting started so it's really neat to be pretty early on in that in that um not niche um industry i guess yeah podcasting Mm -hmm. industry so yeah and i was 50 years from now we can say we were started within the first 10 years Mm -hmm. yeah so so i I, like that that yeah that's cool (laughs) I was 13 and you were 15, so we were both really young at the time. Hello, everybody. Thank you for downloading this podcast, The Basscast of Brothers. My name is Josh, and my brother JJ is going to tell you about the layout of the podcast. Well, we're going to be giving a fishing report of any recent fishing trips we've been on. So I think we were, I mean, we were doing it every week for about, was it a year? I think it was a year or two. Well, our fifth fifth birthday is coming up. Okay. So So it three years. We were doing it for about a year, and then we emailed a different podcast we listened to, Two Pound Test and a Bear Hook. Okay, that's where you're going. And... We asked if they could give us a mention on their show because we really love their show. And then he asked if we were interested interested in coming on as guests. Yes, so we gladly accepted their invitation. It was uh, Zach Anderson and Minnesota Matt who co- who hosted that podcast. And we did an interview with them. They posted it. And they actually were going to have us do a segment for them once a month that was going to be called The Main Minute. But unfortunately, after the first Main Minute, they ended their show because of time constraints. So, you know, that was pretty sad. Mm -hmm. But luckily, we may have pulled over some of their listeners after that, and we joked with them that we had stolen their listeners. (laughs) (laughs) But... Our podcast continued to grow from there. We went on a radio show in Maine, and this was around between episode 40 and 55. Welcome back to Bass Caster Bros. This is Josh, one of your hosts. And your other host, the Rig Keeper, a.k.a. JJ, is sitting right here. So, JJ, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, did you hear my little Oh yeah, thing in the that's going to be a little debate we're going to have a little later in the show. Yeah, it's, so we have that to talk about. It was Two Pound Test who said we should listen to a podcast about podcasting. I didn't really know that there were there was anything like this, but it was Daniel J. Lewis from the Audacity to Podcast. He had recently celebrated 100 Episodes, yeah, I think, because he had 100 tips. 100 or I think that, tips. or did he re- celebrate 200 episodes? I we went back and downloaded a bunch of the old episodes, and I just like listened to almost all of them. <laughs> yeah, because we learned everything we knew about podcasting just from listening to other podcasts up to that point. Yeah. Oh yeah. So then like we didn't we watch got... any videos or listen to any podcasts about podcasting or anything like that. So it was the Dasty to Podcast which really got our podcast like growing and a lot better content and yeah, stuff. More professional. Yes. For sure. And we he helped us with a lot of things. And then we did it for another year. We reached 100 episodes. 100th episode was really fun. And after, it was into our third year, I guess, that we started getting a little inconsistent, missing some shows, and... 
I think that started in either the spring or fall of one year because there's no bass events. Yeah. So it's hard to have stuff to talk about, especially if we don't go fishing, which we don't that much in this spring, in the early spring or fall. And so, like you said, we began being inconsistent, and then it just kept going from there. Life gets busy, you know. Yeah. Especially since you know I was doing some college courses, you know, driving, maybe getting a job soon, stuff like that. And we have some um, things that we're going to do to try to keep the podcast going through all that. Some of them being shorter segments and such. But the point, I think the big point here is we kept going with the podcast even after we, you know, took a six-week break. We kept going. And now we're on episode, we're about to post episode 161 soon. So getting to close to that 200 mark, which will be awesome. And... Um, I think we have to just thank a lot of people for their either support, um, tip the tips like Jan- Daniel J. Lewis and Dave Jackson gave. I haven't listened to him too much, but you have, and oh, you've yeah. spread, <laughs> you've shared with me a lot of the good insight he has. Yeah, so we're just always learning and improving our shows. JJ, it was fun reminiscing about how we got into podcasting and listening to podcasts and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for coming on the 50th episode. Yes, you're welcome. And actually, it's all mine. Thank you for allowing me to come on this podcast. Oh, yeah. And as you probably can tell, we're used to talking with each other on the mic. It does feel like Basscaster Bros. So we kept releasing episodes of Basscaster Bros every week, and we were very consistent and consistently publishing content and then la it was fall of 2016 where i was i mean i was really into podcasting like tech and like like the podcast i listened to all the time was the audacity to podcast on how to improve and grow your show Then, I can't remember if I came across the cubing show first. I think I did. It was like fall, late fall of 2016. And they weren't really releasing episodes anymore. And there were no other cubing podcasts or anything. So, I like, it crossed my mind. I should, maybe I could start a cubing podcast. But I wanted it kind of to be different but and then I kind of forgot about it a little bit, like, nah. And then it was like right around Thanksgiving, and it popped into my head again. I was like, yeah, I would love a new project like this. Basscaster Bros were kind of learning as we went, and I was like, maybe I can launch this one the right way and do everything correct the first first time. That didn't happen. But I thought I could do it, and. It was worth a try, so all, like, Thanksgiving break, I was planning, and I kept planning through December, and I really wanted to launch, like, right after Christmas, Um, and my original idea was to start a YouTube channel as well, which I did was Corner Cutter, and then I thought of a podcast name, my, and I came up with Corner Twist, which is what I launched with. And I really liked that. There was no other YouTube channel names or anything with Corner Twist, so I thought it was pretty good. And then Corner Cutter both had Corner in the name, so I thought that would connect pretty well. So I launched the correct way this time with three episodes. And I kind of... And by the way, I kind of wanted this podcast to be different than other shows. Like, oh, I guess there was the Dulsoni podcast. That was a big group of people just talking about cubing and maybe sort of bringing a guest on sometimes. But I wanted mine to be different, more like how to, like learning about cubing and focused on improving and stuff like that. My first eight or nine shows or so were all about that. First episode was, or second episode was, should you be color neutral and should you learn full OLL? 
third episode was best puzzle shop, so maybe that was the fourth one. Number six was how to organize a competition. And so I was really focused on that, and there was really nothing like that in the speed tubing podcast world. And then on December 31st of 2016, I launched Corner Twist, all about cubing and how to improve. The 3x3 world record was just broken, and am almost sub-20. Welcome to the Corner Twist Podcast. I'm Josh, but I'm also known as Corner Cutter on the SpeedSolving.com forums. This is the podcast where we talk all about speed cubing and give helpful tips on how to get faster. I'll start out by talking about the layout of the podcast. Now, I'm planning for this podcast to be a bi-weekly podcast. Now, I'm planning to talk about my time. So, like my first nine episodes of Corner Twist averaged about seven minutes, and I talked about all different sorts of subjects, focused on teaching everybody about speed cubing and how to improve. And then on episode nine of the podcast, I brought on my first guest. Okay, now I have my brother Jeremy on the podcast. Welcome, Jeremy, and thank you for coming on Corner Twist. Hi, Josh. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, sure thing. Now, you've been cubing for quite a while, just like me. Yeah, for about four, two, three or four years. I was thinking a lot on like episode eight and nine about my name of the podcast. It really wasn't working the way I wanted it to. It was kind of confusing being Corner Cutter on YouTube. Actually, I was Corner Twist on YouTube then, but I was Corner Cutter on the Speed Solving Forums, Corner Twist on YouTube, Corner Twist Podcast. Really wasn't working well, and then I saw that the UK had a Corner Twist speed cubing shop, or speed, uh, speed puzzle shop. And I was like, ah, do I really want to keep going with Corner Twist? So I thought about why not just the corner cutter podcast that sounds pretty good and something like it's sticking to my brand with corner cutter because i was pretty well and still pretty and pretty well known on the forums and then it was episode 10 where i decided to change the name to the corner cutter podcast before we get into that though i would just like to mention I changed the podcast name from Corner Twist to the Corner Cutter Podcast for a few reasons. And that led to me bringing on other guests. And I had one on almost every other show until episode 16 where I got my first listener email. So let's jump right into the show. I received an email from a listener... And he had two questions for the podcast, so thank you, Reggie, for emailing in. He said, it's nice to see another podcast about cubing. And that email really encouraged me to keep going and keep being consistent with the podcast. And then I started bringing on other guests. Like, on episode 17, I had a WCA delegate on, Matthew McMillan. Thank you, Josh, for having me. Um, I'm really excited to talk about uh, being a delegate and about the WCA with you. Then on episode 20 and 21, I brought on my first two guests that I had never met in person before. And those were Trent, who is designing a 3x3, and Cameron Brown from Speed Cube Shop. Doing well. Just busy day as usual, but happy to be here. So to start off, why don't you tell us a little bit about Speed Cube Shop and the services it offers? Sure. So Speed Cube Shop is something that I'm very proud of. I started it when I was 14 years old. The show was still bi-weekly, and on episode 23 and 24, 
I had DM Cubing on, who has the channel DM Cubing. Hey guys, DM Cubing, and you're listening to the Corner Cutter Podcast. And then episode 25, I celebrated one year of the Corner Cutter Podcast. I was super excited. One thing I did special was I emailed everybody who had contributed to the podcast, whether it was a guest or a listener, anybody. I emailed all of them, thanking them for helping bring the podcast to one year. And I got dozens or yeah, at least a dozen responses of congratulations and stuff. So that was very encouraging. And then also it was episode 25 where where I bought the domain, thecornercutterpodcast.com, and that redirected to my .wordpress.com website. And it's also the one-year anniversary of the Corner Cutter Podcast. So this is going to be an exciting show to start off. So I, have- I kept going with the podcast, having guests on almost every week. Every Well, I guess every week, every show – but the show the podcast was every other week and it was getting hard episodes were getting very long like 40 minutes 40 40 minutes to an hour and i had to record an interview and then record all the cubing news segments and all that kind of stuff so it was really a big burden every two weeks to get a show out so that's when I crossed my mind. Maybe I should switch it to a weekly podcast. This was like 28 and 29. I was really considering that. I didn't know if it would work, if it would be too much work. And Basscaster Bros, then we were kind of skipping weeks and not being very consistent. So I was like, maybe I have some time now. And I really, I didn't want to let Basscaster Bros die, but it was kind of being put on the back burner because we were both busier. And then it was episode 30. I had Eric Zhao on from Cube Depot, and I decided to switch it to a weekly podcast. This week, and I can say week now without adding a qualifier, because... This is now a weekly podcast, and I think this is the first speed cubing podcast that has, is a weekly podcast, especially in iTunes. So that is very exciting for TCCP. And then on episode 34, this really doesn't seem like that long ago, I had Kevin Hayes on. Like, at what point in the solve did you know that you had a chance at the world record? Uh, so this all started out pretty pretty standard. Um, the beginning wasn't too lucky. Pretty standard center start. I think centers ended up being about 59 seconds. Um, I got lots of great feedback from that episode. It was one of my most popular episodes then. And then jumping back a little bit to talk about my podcasting journey a little bit more. I started listening. It was late. It was summer of 2017, so I was around episode 15 or so, and I was listening to the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn. I was, well, I became a huge fan of his. I can, I remember so many moments of me listening. I mowed yards, and I listened to podcasts while mowing, which is so good. I don't really know how I would mow without a podcast. So I just remember so many moments of listening to him, just eating up as much or listening to as much content as I could get of Pat Flynn, listening to two or yeah, two of his shows. And then after listening to him, I branched out into other speakers or podcasters in the same sort of niche, like I started listening to Cliff Ravenscraft, which I've talked about before, and then uh, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. So it was all that summer and fall of 2017, so about a year ago, 
where I really started to listen to those guys. My eventual goal is to start a business of my own. I'm not exactly sure what yet, but I love podcasting and business and all that sort of stuff. So, so I was really trying to improve the podcast and do what they say every week. That led me to a podcast hosted by Dave Jackson called Podcast Rodeo Show. He listens to the first two minutes of a podcast and sees how long he can hold on. And so I submitted my show to be reviewed by Hall of Fame, or not back then, but he is now a Hall of Fame podcaster, Dave Jackson. Welcome to the Podcast Rodeo Show. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the School of Podcasting.com. If you're new to the show, this is where we grab a random podcast and see how long we can hold on. Today, we're going to be looking at the Corner Cutter Podcast. This is a show that is an informative weekly speed cubbing podcast that provides interesting guest interviews with expert cubers, competition organizers, and even WCA delegates. Current cubing news, tips on improving, and updates on personal progress and achievements are frequent topics as well. Visit the podcast website for links and show notes, thecornercutterpodcast.com, and send feedback and or questions, which Josh will answer on the show at feedback at thecornercutterpodcast.com. And if you're thinking, what, corner cutters, this must be a productivity show? Nope. It's about the Rubik's Cube. We'll get to the episode right after this. The following is an opinion, and only an opinion. These are actual, honest first impressions. If you don't like the opinion, feel free to never listen again. Let's get our cube on. This is Kevin Hayes, and you're listening to the Corner Cutter Podcast. And the voiceover guy starts right now. Hmm. And the voiceover guy starts now. Hey guys, welcome to the Corner Cutter Podcast. I'm your host, Josh. And this is a standard at this point. Like, I'm averaging about 206, which is the world record single. So any standard saw is going to be world record. Or, like, it felt, like, decent. So any, like, thing better than average is going to be world record. And I'm guessing that's good because you are so knee deep into jargon that I have no idea what you're talking about. But I'm assuming if I was a cuber, I'd be like, oh, I can't believe this guy's giving the secrets of the center solve. Uh, The only thing when I looked at your website, I do have to say I was thrilled when he gave me the winnie. Otherwise, it is a buzzer if he doesn't like it. So I was thrilled about that. And. And that made me realize that I actually was producing content and a podcast that was decent quality. Like, not to brag or anything, but I guess it just made me realize that I wasn't doing as bad as I thought, maybe. I was right around that time where I think I found my voice in the podcasting space, and that is to teach people more about cubing like by bringing on guests that know a lot of information to dive deep into cubing topics where we talk about like behind the scenes information and dive deep into certain subjects so you guys can learn more by producing a consistent weekly show so it was like right around episode 34 35 where i think i found my voice, and really started getting some momentum. Um, Episode 38 was Best and Budget Cubes of 2018. That was a very popular episode. And it was right around that time where I was listening to these guys all the time, and I asked a question on a podcast called Ask the Podcast Coach. To this video, and you can ask your question live. We do have a good question uh, this is from Josh from the Corner Cutter podcast. I'll be interested to hear your take on this one, Jim. Hey, this is Josh from the Corner Cutter Podcast.com. I have two questions for you guys today. And it was right around that time as well 
where I found a new cubing podcast called The Interactive Cubers. Carlin and Jeffrey hosted that podcast. It's currently on a little hiatus. It was in Apple Podcasts, and I really list, like listening to any cubing podcast, so I downloaded all three episodes at that were on there at the time, and I enjoyed the show. So, And they gave their email address, which I loved, so I reached out to them saying I liked listening and asked them a few questions about how they got into podcasting and stuff like that, and I told them I hope they continued podcasting because most cubing podcasts get into episode three or four and then disappear. A cool statistic for all podcasts is 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode seven. And there have been quite a few cubing podcasts that got to episode three, four, or five and just stopped. And then it was... It was a few weeks later that they emailed me and asked if I would be interested in coming on the Interactive Cubers. I said yes and was very excited. And then they published that episode a few weeks later. And you can listen to that episode on Apple Podcasts right now. I will have the link in the show notes to the episode. And it is the one and only, the amazing, the spectacular, the man, the myth, the legend, Josh from the Corner Cutter Podcast. Oh boy, Thanks for coming here we out. go. Hey, Colin and Jeffrey. Thanks for the invite. I'm happy to come on. Now we're getting into the history of just a few weeks ago or months ago, or a couple months ago. On episode 45, I had on Shivam Bansal from Who was and still is the multi-blind world record holder. Thank you. Thank you so much for having. It's really fun to do a podcast always, especially with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And then just two or three weeks ago, I had Daniel Goodman, DG Cubes. Thanks for coming on the Corner Cutter podcast. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. This is great. Both of those were great episodes. So the Corner Cutter podcast, originally Corner Twist, has come a long way. One Over one and a half years of the podcast and it's on episode 50 this is cool but just to wrap the history up i just love podcasting i love listening to podcasts and i hope to keep producing consistent content for the corner cutter podcast that music means it's time for cubing news records releases and ratings this week, I have three records by Max Park. So, first one is 6x6. Six six. He got a 113 single for 6x6 six six and a 117 mean. That just dropped the mean just by a teeny bit, but he broke the single by a second. So, 6x6 six six is getting super fast. At the Asian World Championship... Felix Zemdegs got a 202 7x7 seven seven mean and a 154 single. So still five seconds away from Max Parks' single, but a 154 single is still super fast. Way f uh, faster than um, Kevin Hayes, so now he's second in the world. So that's cool to see him getting faster. Then Max Park took the NAR for 3x3 three three back. It is now 4.40, so that is super fast. He's getting super close to Felix's world record, 4.22. It looks like Max Park has the most sub-5 singles right now. Nothing else big happened in the past few weeks, so let's move on to releases. Mo Feng Xiao, she released the MF9. It's the 9x9. Nine nine. It comes in black, stickerless, and white. So, that's pretty cool. They like the first ones coming out with, like, updated. Like, ever since Sheng Xiao released those 
8, 9, and 10. And it looks like they're going to be coming out with a 10x10 10 10 as well. MoYu released the Aocheng 5x5 GTSM Magnetic 5x5. That is pretty cool. I would probably still stick with the Chiyi Wushuang 5x5. But this one might be pretty good. And then finally, Yushin released the 3x3 Treasure Box. Looks pretty interesting. Has a little, is a cavity in the center, in the core of the cube. Where you can store stuff. Pretty cool. Might be worth checking out. The rating for this week is the Mini Wuchwei M. I Funny story about how I got this puzzle. My last competition, which was on August 5th. This 4x4 was on pre-order for a while. And then Speed Cube Shop had a sale. So I, was, I got it for 25 bucks. So I got a great deal on that. That was pre-order. It said it wouldn't ship until between August 5th and August 15th. So I was like hoping they would be wrong and it would come earlier. And then three days before the competition, I got an email from Speed Cube Shop saying it shipped. It's like, whoa, maybe it'll come. The competition was on Sunday, so it had to come that Saturday. So I was really hoping it would come, and then Saturday morning, it said out for delivery. I was like, yes, because my Wuchwei M wasn't, it was really slow, and I mean, I just didn't set it up well. So I really wanted a new 4x4, one that would, I mean, the smaller version sounded really good. So I was able to get it before the competition, and I got some good solves. I really like this cube. It's about two millimeters smaller than the regular Wuchwei. And being magnetic from the factory for so cheap is awesome. The stickerless shades are the same as the other Wuchwei. And one thing about it being smaller is it's a lot easier to hold. And I guess the pieces look more like a 5x5, five five, closer to a 5x5, five five, that kind of size. Maybe it's still a little bigger, but it's really cool having a small four by four. So if you're looking to upgrade from, let's say, a Chi Zhang or uh, maybe the MF four, definitely consider getting this one and the magnetic version as well. If you plan on getting it from Speed Cube Shop, then please use my affiliate link. You can go to thecornercutterpodcast.com slash support to see all the ways you can support the show by using affiliate, affiliate links when you buy cubes. Now it's time for shout outs. I had two questions left from Phoenix who sent in a really nice email a few months ago. And I never got to these questions. So he said, if you were to add two WC events and take away two events, what would they be? Let's see. He says what he would take away, but I'll save that until after. I would have to remove four blind and five blind. I Events just take so long and so much practice to learn. So... I don't know if I would ever get into those events. I know a lot of people don't like clock or feet, but I think feet is okay, especially since DRL got all these records. I mean, got super fast at feet. And just showing how fast you actually can get. And then clock, I recently got into that, and it's a cool event. Adding two events, I would add Kilominx and... And probably Master Pyramix. I think those two events can improve a lot and hardware can improve as well. So, Kilominx and Master Pyramix. Phoenix said, I would take away Megaminx and Skube as I don't know many top cubers who devote all their time on just Megaminx or Skube. Also, this is probably quite subjective, but also because they are my least favorite events. I would add 
two by two by three as I would like to see a cuboid added, and I really would like to see some speed two by two by threes as well. I would also add the gear ball because it's about time we see an official gear in print in quotes event, especially because they're holding it at Nats twenty eighteen. Then his other question was, what would your dream 3x3 be? For me, I would like to see basically a GAN 354M, but with much lighter magnets and not quite as fast. This would be great because I like the soft, clacky feel of the SM and the light, the light magnets and the slightly slower speed of the MF2R. MF3 RS2. Hmm. I would say... I mean, the 354M is pretty nice. I would say a cube similar to the SM, like a, the same circle centerpiece being maybe 52 millimeters. I think that would be a perfect cube for me. So, black plastic, 52 millimeters, maybe 53, but... I don't know how much difference that is. I'm going with 52. The shades would have to be similar to the Valk shades. Just a little lighter blue and red. Um, But I like those shades. And then be magnetic similar to the SM. I was playing around with a 5.0 centimeter cube from the cubing classroom one, the mini one. And I really like that. If it was just a little bit bigger, so that's where I got 52 from. And the SM and regular cubes are just a little too big, I think. So that's what I would have. Thanks again, Phoenix, for the email. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast and you've been listening for a little while, you're just kind of lurking and you haven't like emailed in or anything... I really want to hear from you and to hear what you like about the show and what makes you keep coming back. Please email me feedback at the cornercutterpodcast.com. So to continue celebrating the 50th episode of the Corner Cutter Podcast, I want to give some behind the scenes information on how I record and stuff I use and maybe a little bit about me as well. So I'm recording on a Fifine microphone. It's on Amazon for about $30. It's working pretty good. It has a pop filter. Uh, my goal is to upgrade to the ATR2100 with a boom arm and stuff, but I'm saving for a car right now, so I don't have the money for that. I'm recording on GarageBand, and I record interviews on Skype with the software called Call Recorder, Ecamm makes that. It works very well and I haven't had any problems with it. For setting up guests, I, at least recently, I've tried setting up, like asking people to come on months in advance and then a week or so before the actual, when I want to do the interview, I reach out and ask when they would be available and then we pick a certain time and date based on when I and the guest can do it. And I send the guest a list of questions the night before, so they have some time to prepare. And also with the questions, I send out a list on how we can get the best audio quality, like no cubing during the interview. I've had problems with that in the past. Like don't have a squeaky chair or anything and make sure... You don't have any fans or air conditioning on because I want to make sure we can get the best audio quality possible. Then when do I record? This summer it's been kind of weird, but before that, and I will continue doing this, I'll record, plan on the weekend and record on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, and then try to get it all posted Monday night. Because I don't want it to interrupt school. So I'm getting on back on to posting out on late Monday or early Tuesday. And getting everything recorded on the weekend. 
I host the Corner Cutter podcast on Spreaker, and I have a paid plan on there, so all my episodes stay on in the feed. And then I host my website on WordPress. Some behind the scenes about me. I'm 17 years old. My favorite hobbies are podcasting, cubing, and fishing. And I also like running as well. This past weekend, I ran a 5K. I completed it in 31.52, right around there. It was a little longer than a 5K, though, 3.8. Three, five miles, so not exactly. So I was hoping to get under 30, but wasn't able to. I'm about a little less than halfway through the couch to 5K training, so I'm not fully ready to run a 5K yet. I love listening to podcasts. I'm subscribed to over 30 ones that I listen whenever they come out. Most are weekly, and that's about it. So... That was some behind the scenes. I hope you liked it. Let's move on to question of the month. Last month's question, which I didn't get any answers for, it's kind of hard, I guess, was what's something you've misunderstood in your cubing journey? My answer is uh, when I was looking in to get my first speed cube, I did research on the speed solving forums on what, was the best cube. The best cube at that time was the A-Long, Along V2. But I was, when I was reading articles about the Zanchi, I, just, you know, this was like early 2016, and I was looking at articles on the Zanchi, it looked like a great cube. But I didn't know this at the time, those articles were actually from 2013 and 2014. I didn't look at the date. <laughs> And people still said the Zanchi was pretty good when I asked about it. So I ended up getting the Zanchi. And then it was only later, when I went to my first competition, I figured out that that wasn't, wasn't the best cube at that time. So that's what I misunderstood. The September question of the month is what was your first encounter with the Rubik's Cube? And now, it's like the major encounter that led to you learning. Like maybe you got it for your birthday or someone gave you a cube and then you put it away for a while. That's similar to my story, which I'll share at the end of the month. But what like started your journey and you learning about speed cubing and solving the cube. Please send in your answers, either in audio format or in email. You can go to thecornercutterpodcast.com slash feedback to access both of those ways. That's it I have for the 50th episode. I want to thank JJ once again for coming on the podcast. And I especially want to thank you guys for listening to the podcast. I wouldn't be at episode 50 without you listening. So thank you. And now it's time to take this episode back to the scrambling table. And I'll talk to you guys again next week in episode 51 of the Corner Cutter Podcast. Next week's guest is Phil Yu from the cubicle.us.